Um, because one of the things that I'm finding is oftentimes we as believers, we get a lot of information. But the power is in the transformation. The power is in the doing. It's like James said, don't just be hearers of the word, but be ye doers also. And so since we've been talking about the power of, of the unconscious, the power of the conscious mind, it's kind of good to know how to work with them. It's good to know how to work with them. And so we're, we're, we're going to be uh, finishing up the, the, the message on shift, and I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of, just, just a couple of little, some tools that you can take with you that you can actually use on a day-to-day basis to put this stuff into operation. Uh, I'll come back to that. Because you're already doing it. I just want to I just want to help you to see the relevance um of it to your to your your Christian experience. Um how many of you are are are, are interested in becoming more like Jesus? Amen. Let's start there. Becoming more like Jesus, having Christ formed in you because the ultimate purpose and the ultimate intention of God is to conform us into the image of his son. Can I get a witness? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, Kendrick read it or, 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 or Pastor King read it. Though we walk about in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh because the weapons of our warfare, somebody say weapons of our warfare, I want you to understand that as a Christian, as a believer, you are in a warfare. Even if you are not in Christ, you are still in a warfare. Because there are forces outside of you who are seeking to destroy you. The enemy comes to rob, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and that you might have that life more abundantly. Kathy pointed out how one of her co-workers, she used to walk by him every day. He smiled. Nice individual. No one would have known what was actually going on in his internal world. And since he didn't know how to handle it, it came out in a different way. He wasn't a bad person. Most people who do bad things aren't bad people. They just don't know any other way to deal with the pressure of just simply living. But I believe that we as the people of God are called to help people to live full lives. Let me say that again. I believe that we as the people of God are called to assist people to live full lives. But as I stated a couple of weeks ago, we have to know how to live a full life if we're going to help other folk live full lives. But the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly. They're not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down, or King James says, casting down imagination. Somebody say imagination. That's what we're going to be working with. We're going to work today with the power of your imagination. My, 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 my. Somebody said a Christian shouldn't use his imagination. Pulling down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If you and I can just simply grasp those few scriptures, we will learn the secret of living in victory. Anybody want to live in victory? The weapons of, they're not carnal, they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 
casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, which does imply there needs to be a knowledge of God that we possess. This is not knowledge about God. This is knowledge of God. That's another message. We are inundated. We are packed with knowledge about God. We can quote scripture. We can quote what this preacher, the other preacher, and his preacher said about God. But the issue is, do we personally have a knowledge of God that has come out of our experience with God? Oh, y'all stay with me. Knowledge of God. And then bringing every thought, where is this battle taking place? The battle is in your mind. Every thought into the obedience of Christ, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and then bringing every thought into obedience to Christ. That's how you deal with strongholds. Now, I want you to understand a few terms. Let's, 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 let's get a few terms established. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is a fortified place. It's a place of security and survival. It's a stronghold. It's fortified. It's like it's a place of defense. It's a place where you can go and have an idea that now you have security because you're locked up behind this stronghold. And where are these strongholds being built? In your mind. How are they being built? Let's look at the imagination. Imagination is the act or the power of forming a mental image of something that's not present to your senses or never before wholly perceived in reality. Let me read it again. Your imagination. It's the act or the power of forming a mental image of something that's not present to your senses. Now, I've already established we do this all the time. Somebody said, Pastor, I don't believe you. Oh, we're going to test it. We're going to test it out in a minute. We're going to see just how real it is. Mental image of something not present to your senses or never behold, never before wholly perceived in reality. Note the act of the power of forming mental images. One of the most powerful things God has given us as being created in his image is the power of imagination. It's the power of imagination. The power. Somebody said the power of imagination. Hmm. Let me give you a couple quotes about imagination. Mark Twain. Y'all remember Mark Twain? Mark Twain said, you can't depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. Now think about it. <laughs> you can't depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. Now, how many people? Yeah, quite a few of us wearing glasses, I see. Because when our eyes start getting blurred, what do we do? We go to the optometrist and we get an eye exam. And then the eye exam will show what the condition of our eyes are. And so to correct our seeing or lack thereof, he will give us a eyeglass prescription. And then they will get us glasses. And we put those glasses on and we, people come more into focus. Trust me, I know. There was a time when I, I, I could either wear or not wear glasses. 
Now I've gotten to the point where I still cannot or not wear. That's a choice that I have, understand? However, the consequence of me not wearing glasses is I don't see real good. So since I want to see real good, I need to do whatever I need to do to bring my eyes into focus. However, you can't depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. So some of us need a prescription for our imagination. Are you with me? Les Brown, great speaker, motivator. I love Les Brown. Les Brown said, live out of your imagination instead of out of your memory. Live out of your imagination instead of out of your memory. Many people live out of their memory, and as we're about to see here in a little bit, by doing that, really what they're doing is they're replaying the same movie over and over and over again. And what's happening is strongholds are being built up in their mind. You ever go to a family reunion, and I use this all of the time as an illustration, you go to a family reunion and there is that, that, that one set of cousins or aunts and uncles that everybody is hoping don't get together because everybody knows when they get together, there's going to be a fight. And the fight is over something that happened 25 years ago. Every time they see them, they replay that movie over again. And by replaying the movie, they are actually re-experiencing everything that took place. The same feelings that, that happened, the same thoughts all of this stuff comes back in the moment, and other people are sitting by saying, why are they still arguing about it? That happened 25 years ago. It's over. You ever met people who don't realize the next day that whatever happened yesterday is over? They're stuck. Replaying the same movie. Oh, aren't you ready to turn the channel and watch something else? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22 through 23. I'm almost done with all the scripture we're going to use. Almost. Says this. For you ought to put off. We looked at this last week. In fact, all the scriptures that that I'm using today, I've used in the previous messages, so I'm just trying to bring them all together. You ought to put off the old man according to your way of living before who is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed where? In the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And as I pointed out last week, I am of the conviction that what psychologists refer to as the unconscious or subconscious mind is in actuality the spirit of our mind. We are trifold, spirit, soul, body. Proverbs 20, 27 says this, The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Oh, I hope y'all get this. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, or the lamp of the Lord, searching all all the inward parts of the belly. So you know when we say, search me, Lord, search me. God says, okay. But what he uses to search us is the spirit of man, your spirit. Which is why in the born-again experience, our spirit is born again. Now our spirit is alive to God. Now God uses our spirit to search us, to show us what's really going on in the inner part of our lives. Does this make sense? 